Welcome back. Here's another video on analytic geometry. This one's the division point formula. Let's see what that's all about. Now, when we talk about the division point formula, we're talking about finding the coordinates of a point that lies on a straight line between two other points that are given. So it's kind of like the midpoint formula, only we're finding the coordinates of a point that doesn't lie exactly halfway between two others. So if it isn't exactly halfway along, how are we going to know how far along that line we have to stop? Well, it's going to be given in the question. So the question will give us a starting point and an ending point, and then it's going to tell us some fraction or ratio of the journey between those two points where we need to stop. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to let you down easy here. This is what the division point formula looks like. Now, if you would just give me a minute to explain, you might realize it's not that bad. Now, notice it just starts with XP and YP in a set of brackets separated by a comma. All that's doing is reminding us that what we're looking for is a set of coordinates, an X value at the point of division, that's what the P means, and a Y value at the point of division. They're separated by a comma and contained by brackets, just like every other set of coordinates that we've ever seen. So here's what a question might look like if we had a division point on a test. Now we're going to start solving this together. I'm going to make some really important reminders along the way. I'll put all those reminders up on the screen at the end of the video. But for now, just follow along and listen closely and watch closely to what I'm doing here to get through the question. So the first thing you need to know to label your coordinates, now it definitely matters where you label x1 and y1 and where you label x2 and y2. In previous formulas, I kept telling you it doesn't matter where you put x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, but now I'm telling you it definitely matters. So x1 and y1 are going to get labeled at our starting point, the coordinates of the point where we start this journey. Now, of course, that means that x2 and y2 are going to go and be placed at my ending point, the set of coordinates that represents the point where this journey ends. Now, if this were a word problem, you'd be told where you were starting and ending, like you're leaving from home, walking in a straight line to school or something like that, and you would know if you were starting from home, you would call the coordinates that they gave you for that x1 and y1. Now, here, the notation is for a line segment. Notice how it says along line segment AB. That's the capital A, capital B with the line on top. Now, because in the way they wrote that, A comes before B in that notation, well, that means I'm starting at A and ending at B. If they wanted to trick us here, they might have written somewhere along line segment BA is where we stop. And if they wrote the B first before the A, that would mean I was starting at point B and ending at point A. But for this question, the way it's written, line segment AB, I'm starting at A and ending at B. So point A got x1, y1, and point B, my ending point, got x2 and y2. Now second, about that fraction, A over B, you see it repeated twice in this equation. It's given in the question. That's the fraction three-fifths of the way that they gave us. So all I have to do here is take that fraction, 3 over 5, and plug it into the two parts of the formula where I see that A over B. Now, on an exam, they might try to trick us by giving a ratio instead of a fraction. So they might say you're traveling from A to B and you stop at the point that divides the line in a ratio of 3 to 2. Well, all I need to do is convert that ratio into a fraction and then plug it in for A over B. And converting a ratio to a fraction is actually pretty easy. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the first number in that ratio, in this case 3, and put it in up top where I see A in my fraction. Then I'm going to take the sum of the two numbers in my ratio, that's in this case that's 3 plus 2, and plug them in on the bottom where I see b. So notice how my fraction comes out to 3 over 5. Now the third thing you have to watch out for is you really got to be careful for your order of operations here. Now I'm going to start with what's written inside the brackets. So on the x side I've got x2 minus x1, so I'll go ahead and solve that, it's pretty simple. And on the y side, I've got y2 minus y1, so I'll go ahead and do that, also pretty easy. Now remember, I can work on the x side and the y side of my formula here at the same time because I'm keeping x and y separate. There's no crossover between them, so I can work on them at the same time. And now that I've solved for what's inside those brackets on the x side and the y side, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the fraction that's out front of the brackets by the number that's left inside the brackets. 
So to do this, and it should all be done in one step, I'm going to divide the fraction that's out front and multiply by what's inside. So in this case, it's 3 divided by 5 times the x value in the bracket, and then 3 divided by 5 times the y value in the bracket. And now that I've simplified all that, I can take the x1 and add it to that other x value. I can take the y1 and finally add it to the other y value. And that's all there is to it, a big scary formula, but with a little bit of practice, you're going to get the hang of this no problem. Now let's see if we're on the same page by trying a couple more examples right now.